All right, welcome to chapter four, linear equations. Um, we're gonna learn how to solve linear equations by graphing to begin with. Um, so first we need to know what is in a linear equation. So um, in the last chapter, we learned that a linear expression is one where the x, y, um, basically any of the variables are, are only to the first power. Um, that holds true here. As you can see, um, this, this uh, equation right here, y is to the first power, x is to the first power. We're going to be doing a lot of x and y. And the reason is, is because a linear equation, as it sounds, creates a line. And it creates a line in the coordinate plane. So typically, um, your values are going to be y and x. Um, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, one is the dependent and one is the independent variable. So even if you were given different variables, uh, you would have to figure out which one was dependent and which one was independent. Okay, so uh, the dependent is y, the independent is x. Um, okay, so let's talk about this. Um, the things you need to know from this particular slide is that whenever we have an equation, okay, it is the equation we have is y equals x plus 1. We're going to create a table of values. So this is called a table of values. And you will want to create this on any time you are going to graph something. So I actually don't like this table of values as much because typically what we want to do is we want to put the x, this is how I do it, this is how most of the math teachers I know, and then you put the equation here, which is y equals x plus 1, and then you put your y, and then you have, that is going to create an ordered pair, and I'll show you that in a second, so bear with me. Um, the solution to a linear um, equation is an ordered pair. Um, so let's let's see what we mean by that. Okay, so if so, y depends. So that's why it's called dependent. Y depends on what x is, and x is the independent. And we'll we'll talk more about that. Um, but when I make, so then I just get to make up what I want over here. Okay. As you can see, they made up, they'd made up negative one. So they said, okay, if Y or if X is negative one and I add one to it, then Y would be equal to zero, right? If I solve Y equals negative one plus one, I get zero. So my ordered pair is x is negative 1, y is 0. So one of the points that I could use is negative 1, 0. And this line down here, it, it goes on forever. So there is no, um, there's no limit to what I could make x um, and then solve for y. So that's all we're going to be doing. We're basically going to want to get it into a form that looks like this so that we can graph it. Okay, so then they picked zero. So y equals zero plus one. Well, that's one. So our another point on our line is zero, one. Another point on our line, they picked two. So I could have picked one. I could have picked 10, right? 10 plus one's 11, so I would have had a, a point 10, 11. Um, 100, I could, there's a point 100, um, and 101, 100 comma 101. So there is no limit to what I could do here. But then I just take again, this is my X. So I just, this is my X, this is my Y. And I create this ordered pair. And then I graph my points. And as you can see, they graphed negative one zero to be here. Let's use a different color. So negative one zero, zero one. Oh. 0, 1, oh, I lost my pen, 0, 1, and then 3, uh, or 2, 3, right? So they just plotted these points that I came up with, okay? Let's, all right, let's go, and hopefully this makes more sense. Let's make our own here. 
All right, so I'm going to start by making my table of values. My equation goes between the x and the y. Especially when these get more complicated, I recognize some of you are already, already like, ooh, I could do these in my head. And yes, you could. Um, I don't recommend it at first until you really get the hang of these. Um, so this is a table of values. This is, this is what we're going to create. And uh, I'm just going to start, and then I'm going to graph down here. So this will be my y, this will be my x, and I'm going to uh, get started. So I, I don't know. I, I sometimes start with negative. You can. Um, let's go ahead and start with negative 1. So that way we have something in the, uh, in the negative zone. So y equals negative 2 times negative 1, excuse my writing, plus 1. Well, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, plus 1 is 3, so I have created the point negative 1, 3. All right, um, if, you're, if you're not seeing what this is, pause it and see if you can try to figure out what we've done here. If it's 0, if x is 0, well, then that's negative 2 times 0, which is 0, plus the 1, which is 1. Um, if it's 1, then y equals negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2, plus 1, which is negative 1. I'm going kind of quickly because we have quite a bit to cover in this here. And so I have three points. Um, I could easily do another point if I want. And, and it doesn't have to, but I do like to stay. It's easier if you, you, if you do 0 and if you do 1 and negative 1 because those change, um, the, they, they make them easy to graph, and uh, they're generally the easiest to solve. Um, so let's just let's do one more. Let's do, a, let's do an odd one. Let's just do 10. So y equals negative 2 times 10 plus 1. So negative 2 times 10 is negative 20 plus 1 is uh, negative 19. So we have the point 10, negative 19. All right, so let's plot our points. Negative 1, x value, up. So left 1, up 3. That's negative 1, 3. We have 0 to the left or right and up 1. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Um, you'll be able to do this on your computer, so it'll be much more accurate. We have 1 to the right and down 1 for 1, negative 1. And then I made a really big one, so 10 to the right and 19 down. So we'll call that there, okay? And then we're just going to draw our line. I'm going to take a risk here and try to use my little shape tool if I can. Uh, actually not sure how okay so we're just gonna do my best to freehand through here so we've created this line um, things to notice um, from left to right if I look at it it goes down and that's because this is negative we'll learn more about how they behave but I have a negative um, it, it's going downhill and we'll learn more about that don't worry but uh, just so you know, this should have been on, every point should be right on the line, so I would need to adjust this to make it a little more accurate. All right. So, graphing horizontal and vertical lines. This looks weird. There's a lot of information on this, on this, but um, the main thing you need to know is that if, if, if I say y equals any number, okay, so that's what y equals b means. If I say y equals any number, for instance, down here, y equals negative 3. That means that for every point, the value of y, okay, is negative 3. So since every, no matter what it is, the value of, no matter what x is, y is negative 3, it creates this, it creates a horizontal line that just goes through negative 3. Right? If x is 2, y is negative 3. If x is 3, y is negative 3. Um, because there is no x. There's 0x. Okay? So in the, in the, um, in the, if we were to make this in the same form as the other one, there, are, there is no x. Okay? Um, similarly, uh, so all you have to do is just remember that, that when y, when it just says y equals something, just like this, that that's a horizontal line going through negative 3. And similarly, if you have x just equal to something and no y values, 
okay, then every single point is going to be at, at x equals 2, so that creates a vertical line, right? So pick, pick this point right here on our vertical line. What is the value of x? x is the one that goes right and left. It's 2, right? No matter where I go, x is still 2 because this is the x the x axis and it is on 2. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. The easy way to think of this um, without thinking too difficultly is just if there's a y value, only a y value like this, it's horizontal. If there's only an x value, it's vertical. That's the main thing you need to know. Okay, so now this was the modeling real life. Um, I went ahead and left everything up because I didn't want to take too much time, but I do want to talk about this. Um, so you can kind of look at it, see if you can figure out how they did it. Um, but this particular one, um, we are talking about a tropical storm, okay? So a tropical storm, it tells us right here that a tropical storm becomes a hurricane and when it reaches 74 miles an hour, that's, informa that's, that's information we'll need to know. So they tell us the wind speed Y in miles per hour, okay? So basically the wind speed um, depends on how long, the wind speed depends on how long the hurricane has had to get going, essentially, okay? So it's represented by this equation here, and we put it in this table of uh, values down here, where X is the number of hours after it enters the Gulf of Mexico. So we've got this storm, it's brewing, it's out, and it, and it moves its way into the Gulf of Mexico. And once it hits the Gulf of Mexico, our magic equation, Y equals 2X plus 66, kicks in. And it wants to know, so we could tell the people, when will it become a hurricane? So if we, if we graph this equation, okay, they've done it for us, we notice that when it enters, hopefully you're thinking, so pause the video and tell me what is the speed of the hurricane, what is the speed of the wind when it reaches the Gulf of Mexico? So you're going to hit pause and think. Look at this. Really think. Um, hopefully you paused it and realized that at, at zero hour, right, at, at hour, because these are hours and these are, this is my speed over here on this side. So at zero hours, it is, it has hit the Gulf of Mexico and the speed is 66 miles an hour. One hour later, it's at 68 miles an hour. Two hours later, it's at 70. So it's going up two miles per hour, which brings me to another important point that you'll learn later, which is this, this number that's connected, the coefficient connected to our x once I am in, this is called um, point slope, for, or I'm sorry, this is called slope intercept form. Um, the, the, the coefficient of x is the rate, which is super cool. And guess what 66 is? 66 is where it intercepts the Y, and I am way ahead of myself, but I don't care because you guys are smart, and I believe you'll get this better if you get it, get a little glimpse of it now. So the 66 is where it intercepts the Y value. That's why this is called the Y intercept form, um, or the slope intercept form. Man, I'm messing that up. That's like my favorite form. Um, anyway, so three hours in, it's at 72, and in four hours, it has reached our magic 74 miles an hour, which is where they tell us that it has become a hurricane. So watch out, Gulf of Mexico, because in four hours, you will reach hurricane speeds and beyond as time goes on. So that was very dramatic. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, uh, that's it. So this is graphing. The big part to remember for this chapter for this homework is how to make one of these. The table of values. And then how to take the table of values to create this xy coordinates. Remember that my x's come from this line. I substitute them into my equation. They output this y value. So that's another way they call this is inputs and outputs. 
Okay, so you input an X and get a Y, and then from that you create an ordered pair. You plot the ordered pair onto your coordinate plane, and you have a line. And this is one of my favorite chapters because I like lines. I don't know why. I love graphing too. So I think hopefully if any of you are anything like me, you will enjoy this chapter. I know I do. Um, this is my favorite chapter in the book possibly. Um, so enjoy and come see me with questions. Thanks for choosing Mr. Hyde's Mathematics.